in your rivers running wild What was dead is now alive Come and fill us Come and fill us To hear the sound of heaven roar we are The remarkable conversion of Saul in Acts 9 reminded me of the conversion of a Jewish rabbi I first heard about through Gideon's presentation his name was Herb Opelek, who was born in Brooklyn, New York, was raised in an Orthodox Jewish home which boasted many rabbis in the family tree. He attended Hebrew day school and by age 10 was fluent in both modern and ancient Hebrew. He had a near photographic memory and wangled quite a few free dinners by performing his famous pin trick. I would take a volume of the Talmud and allow a person to push a pin into it, he explained. I knew the book so well I could judge the page, the line and the letter on which the point of the pin rested. He was ordained as a rabbi at age 18 and later while studying for the first of his two PhDs was ordained as Jordan Jordan, allowing him to judge matters of civil law. As he recounted, in line with the rabbinic statement that one gets to know one's enemy, I did my doctoral work on the New Testament so I could learn how to debunk it. But in late spring of 2000, Opelek's life took a major turn all in one night. He had flown into Boston to raise money for a graduate institute he had founded. But the airline had lost his luggage, which meant he had little to read just his prayer book and one volume of the Mishnah. Already intimately familiar with both volumes and unable to sleep, at 1 a.m. he opened the drawer of the nightstand and found a Gideon Bible. I opened up to John chapter 3, Apelek recalled, and I started being upset because who would want to read something that I had done a dissertation on and I thought I knew? As I read, and reached Nicodemus and been born again from heaven. Even though I had all that book knowledge, and even though I had been scrupulous in obeying all of its laws, it was only at that point, with tears in my eyes, that, my, that the Holy Spirit actually entered into me and I finally understood who Yeshua was. I spent the rest of the night going through in my mind all of the Hebrew Scriptures and finally understanding how they related to Yeshua, to Jesus. Isn't God amazing and so, so merciful? And we should come away from a conversion account such as this and Saul's in Acts chapter 9, which we looked at this past Sunday, and certainly be stunned like Paul was in his letters time and time again by God's grace. Not everyone, of course, hearing those stories will be stunned. Herb discovered, like Saul, how quickly people would turn on you because of their hatred for Jesus. When he shared his newfound faith with the Orthodox community, he was ostracized. They held a funeral for him. People would literally cross the street and spit on him and slap his face. People in general, Opelik said, when they cannot explain what someone has done, they either label that person as demented, crooked or whatever. If people are not willing to test their belief systems, then they get their backs up and want nothing to do with you. It's why I find Luke's choice of words in Acts chapter 9 verse 31 so fascinating. After the sworn enemy of the church, Saul has been transformed and accepted into the church of God. It reads like this, And so the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. It's those two last phrases that really struck me. Walking in the fear of the Lord and walking in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. What better way to describe a church having just come through a firestorm of persecution and now for a time having some peace, having just embraced into its ranks the reason for the war, the previously sworn enemy, fear and comfort. Now, the church in Acts was not immune to fears, of course, but it had ultimately dealt with those understandable fears of a persecution and threats to their lives, not by shutting up and running away, but by fearing the Lord. 
That is by committing themselves in obedience to God and His will and putting Him first no matter what. Their fear of the Lord drove them, not fear of man. Their fear of the Lord dictated their walk, not the ever-changing paths and circumstances before them. Their fear of the Lord caused them to continue to boldly proclaim the gospel, not to cower away for fear of recrimination. Their fear of the Lord meant they counted their lives as nothing in service of Him, not their fear of death. But they also walked, we are told, in the comfort of the Spirit. The word comfort there is also translated as strengthened or encouraged in some translations, but it's the Greek word that Jesus used, remember in John, to describe the Holy Spirit who would come as the comforter. That's not just a buddy who pats you on the shoulder and says, there, there, it's going to all, all be okay. 2021 is coming. No, it's the one who fights alongside you, who fights within you who fights when you have little strength to fight or can't fight at all, who defends you like a lawyer from false accusation, especially from the devil, who protects your heart and soul, who gives you the very ability to fear the Lord, the one on whom we depend entirely to move an inch forward and grow and see the church multiply and grow. For friends, how important it is in the midst of the circumstances of our lives, these crazy, ever-changing circumstances, not knowing what tomorrow will bring, the fears we have about making ends meet, the fears we have about our health, the fears we have about what is church going to be like? Is it going to be the same as we gather again? What are we going to do? How is it going to look? With all those fears and concerns we have, to fear the Lord, and depend on the comfort of the Holy Spirit, to flee there constantly. How important it is for us to learn from this early church amidst all the persecutions and problems and difficulties and inner fears that we are wrestling with in all of the unknowns. What a great description. Fear the Lord and walk in the comfort of His Holy Spirit which is readily at hand that he so graciously gives, just as he gave grace for you to be transformed and changed like Herb, like Saul. Let's pray. Father, help us to ponder and embrace and understand more deeply what it means to fear you and to know indeed the comfort, the sure comfort of your Holy Spirit towards us. Thank you for your grace to us and amidst these crazy times and help us to depend on you wholeheartedly that you might be glorified and the body of Christ might be multiplied. For Jesus' sake, amen. In your rivers running wild what was dead is now alive, come and fill